presentación del excelentísimo señor Matteo Renzi, primer ministro de la República de Italia. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, this is the time, the time to erase poverty and hunger and guarantee a safe ecosystem to the future generations. First of all, I would like to commend the action of the Secretary General and the organization elites for moving forward the debate on the new agenda for sustainable development. It's an achievement in itself. We have come up with a common agenda with universal goals to be applied everywhere, regardless of the different levels of development. Promoting effective development and sustainability, breaking new ground in the way we will act in the coming years. It's both an opportunity and at the same time it's a responsibility. What we need now is a global action, finally. Each nation is in condition to try and to win this very important challenge. The Agenda 2030 envisages a truly new global partnership, not only among governments, parliaments, NGOs, business, citizens, everyone has a role to play. An unequivocal new global deal based on 5P, people, prosperity, partnership, but also planet and peace, a legacy to deliver the next generation. Italy is ready to make a very good job in this direction. First of all, because Italy is the first troops contributor to the United Nations peacekeeping operation, but we know we need some more important than only peacekeeping. After peacekeeping, we, have the, we need an investment in education, initiatives, promotion. For these uh, reasons, the new framework of sustainable development encompasses peace and security, rule of law and promotion of human rights and effective and democratic governance and institutions. Mr. President, I feel compelled to take the opportunity of this extraordinary summit to speak about the absolute drama that is unfolding since uh, too long now over the Mediterranean Sea. Shows that where the cradle of a civilization have become the stage for daily unjustified strains, unbeliev unbelievable sufferings, and unacceptable loss of li lives. The flux of countless desperate people trying to reach Europe and fulfill the simple aspiration of the desert life has not precedence, and it's the result of both poverty and wars, lack of development and extremism. Too many have died. Many more have been rescued in the open sea. I'm proud for the result and the efforts of my people. But these people without a land, uh, who as uh, Pope Francis called them, who escape from Africa and other countries, need an answer very clear today. Italy is aware of its moral responsibility with the European Union and other colleagues. And we hope, finally, we achieve the very important result of common European asylum system, because this is the only solution, not the, close, not the build of walls, a common European asylum system. But at the same time, we know there is a new strategy in front of us. Our new agenda is a very good start, and we adhere to this Agenda 2030 in every sector, National Green Act, initiatives, particularly in the food and nutritional security, in the framework of Expo, the international exhibition in Milan, a platform that Italy offered to the world for the global discussion on nutrition. The vast majority of the countries here represented that are participating, and for us this is a reason of pride. Let me recall the message that comes from Milan, feeding the planet, energy for life a visionary motto chosen more than eight years ago, which touched directly our discussion today. But at the same time, we are ready to work in the correct direction in every field. I personally participated in the Addis Ababa conference on financing for development. 
I think it's absolutely important that when Italy, we lead G7 in 2017, become a country leader also in the most relevant donors. I think we can absolutely consider Italy is a place of dialogue with Europe and Africa, particularly as a, a bridge. Italy is a bridge geographically. I think we must be a cultural bridge. And obviously a very great important investment in the energy security, in the small and medium enterprise, in the macro credit, in the public programs for development. And let me be conclude also with a particular underline about the people who suffer very much the situation of today, the countries that they pay the highest price, particularly the small islands developing states. But I think after this purpose, after this idea, we can absolutely give a message because uh, I think the new agenda calls for a new collective efforts could really give a new hope for the future generation. Let me conclude, Mr. President, with a, a personal note. International aid, international cooperation is the reason why I am a politician. As a young man entering politics as a volunteer 20 years ago, I was already passionate about the impact of development assistance on ordinary policy, ordinary people, ordinary human beings. That made me understand I wanted to run for office and make a difference. Because politics is that, the possibility to make a difference, not only at the level of government, but also for the people who stay outside of, of here. So 20 years later, as a prime minister of my country, I am particularly honored to have the possibility to give the message with you. Agenda 2030 is not simply an occasion for international community. It's the best occasion to transform the fair in hope. Thank you.